This is the best laptop that you've probably never heard of for digital artists, graphic designers, photographers, architects, interior designers, any creative field that you have to constantly be sketching out your ideas. Both of these screens here are touchscreen and it comes with a built-in pen, which we'll show you a little tour of here in just a minute. Now, the reason I don't think that this is a laptop for say 3D modelers, Blender users, or video editors, because it doesn't come with a dedicated GPU. And while that's fine for the former fields, which require 3D modeling applications, uses of Blender, or heavy video processing inside of video editing software. When I first got this laptop into the studio, I expected it to be a very expensive device being in the Think series. But actually, if you look online right now, these are on sale for around $1,200, which I think for a dual screen, both being touchscreen and the capabilities of this secondary touchpad, I thought, what a deal. If you got this from HP or Asus, it would be astronomically more expensive. But Lenovo has been really good about pricing their laptops really well for consumers right now. Now the build quality in this laptop is great. We have an aluminum keyboard deck, aluminum top cover, side panels, and bottom cover. We have quite a bit of port selection on the laptop with a USB type C. This is usually where I plug the charger in, two USB type A's and HDMI, and then two large vents on the back of the chassis. On the left side panel, we have a headphone jack and a USB type C and on the right side panel we have nothing nada now on the bottom cover we have our speakers as well as a large vent and you can see that the bottom covers fit very nicely into the side panels showing off really nice thoughtful build quality famous from Lenovo. Now looking at the flex of the chassis because this is such a wide laptop I thought it'd be quite flexy but it has really good stiff rigidity in the chassis. Looks really nice, not a lot of chassis flex. Now going to open the laptop with one hand, does that no problem, opens and closes very nicely with one hand. And of course, not a lot of screen flex for a really ultra wide 17 inch screen. I think that's just amazing. Now we have a manual cutoff switch for the webcam here. So you can just slide that over and close it off. And here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see it in use. This is the webcam on the Lenovo ThinkBook G three plus and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And of course, as we're looking at the screen, this has a solid color accurate display. It has 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI P3, all at 443 nits of screen brightness and a Delta E of 1.87. So really nice color accurate and sharp 3K display. So this would be great for photo editing, graphic design, and digital art, trying to get maximum color accuracy out of your designs, photos, and art. Now this laptop for how big it is is actually surprising thin and light for a 17 inch laptop. You can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen. This is a really nice on the go package. So I even brought a backpack up here. This is an Intel backpack I recently got and I wanted to try it out. Because this is such a long design, I wanted to see if it would fit in a traditional 17 inch laptop backpack. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it in. And if you have a 17 inch backpack, you can fit it in your backpack, good to go. And it's. It's fairly light. However, you know, 15 inch, 13 inch backpack, no go at all, impossible. It'll be like hanging out of the top like this. <sighs> that wouldn't be good. Now let's go ahead and talk about a few things I don't like before we get into the benchmarks. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at that absolutely fantastic touchpad. And then I'm gonna show you some of the key functionality that takes this from just, you know, somebody slapped a touchpad onto a keyboard deck. And I'm gonna show you some of that software that helps you really optimize your workflow by using this. Now, first and foremost, because it has this massive screen, your whole keyboard and trackpad are kind of shoved over to this side. So what I found is I was honestly often using the laptop like this. So it's almost like I'm using a 13 inch, like 16 by 10 aspect ratio laptop from how I'm sitting on it. And then when I wanted to use the pad, I would just kind of like slide it over or slide myself over and I would use that pen touch pad. So that to me was a slight negative, but I mean, you just can't get around it. It's literally designed that way. So if you just kind of position yourself here, trackpad is centered on the keyboard and you have kind of a nice 13 inch laptop and then, but then you have all this extra screen real estate. So it's like a negative and a positive. Now, one thing that actually was an annoyance and still continues to be is how to remove the pen from the back of the chassis. Now it's super cool that it's built in. However, I, I, I can't get it out with my fingers. I have to take my knife and pop it out. So that was a little annoying. Maybe like if you have your keys with you, you'll have to probably use your keys to get the pen out. It's awesome that it's built in, but it's super difficult to get out. And that, that was really annoying. All right, let's go ahead and open up the laptop. And before we get into the touchpad, I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample of the speakers in use so you can hear what they sound like.
And also, here's a quick sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what that sounds like as well. Now, if you're curious how much this laptop costs, like I said, it's not as much as I expected. I'm gonna put links in the description below so you can check out the live pricing. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And also, we're about to reach 100,000 subscribers. So if you subscribe and ring the bell, you will learn how to enter to win one of these laptops. Once we pass 100,000 subscribers, I'll launch a full giveaway video talking about the giveaway, really excited to be there. We'll be giving away three Legion 5 Pros. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the trackpad. Not only can you just tap here to pull up a sketch pad and go ahead and just sketch out something that you would like to show to a client. Let's say this is an awesome smiley face that I want you to use for your new logo. Well, hey, let's go ahead and share my screen. And immediately I can go ahead and I can share my screen if I'm on a video call and I can show them what the, I just sketched here on my sketch pad. And so it's not just a functional sketch pad for you, but allows you to quickly share things with others, especially as we're going more and more in these digital meetings. It just creates a lot of flexibility. And let's say even you're in a meeting and you're just displaying on a projector in an office, you can sketch something out, pop it up onto your screen and be sharing that. So I just think it's very practical and very quick to share assets. Now you can also reverse that and you can share this screen here. Now why that is awesome is because you can literally be sketching in a Photoshop doc on this screen and it'll be reflecting on to this screen. So let me show you that. Now let's say I'm working on a Photoshop document and I wanna sketch up here on the screen. Now oftentimes when you try and sketch on a two-in-one laptop or on a laptop that has a touch screen, as you're working, the screen's you know wobbling, right? So what you can do is you can go ahead and you can click the share down button and take your finger and move to the exact part of your document where you would like to start sketching. So let's say I wanna sketch right there. So I can just immediately start sketching there. And it's even pressure sensitive. So I can sketch little thin lines or I can make really thick lines. And there's not much of a delay. I'll admit there is a slight delay from when you sketch and when it comes out but it's not a really huge delay. So if that will annoy you, keep in mind, there will be a delay from when you apply your pen here and when the actual line shows up on the screen. So keep in mind that in my unboxing, I think I said that this was a touch screen as well, but it is not. As you can see, I'm putting my pen here on the screen and it is not a touch screen. So your touch screen is all housed right here. Now keep in mind, there's a few more features that come on the trackpad. You can set up quick access to all of your applications. You can view your most used application. You can create apps groups. So there's a lot of flexibility here to improve the productivity of your workflow on the day to day. You also have a numpad, so you can go ahead and do calculations right here from the screen as well. So though it's not a manual numpad like on the keyboard, you have a digital one here on the secondary screen. Now, a lot of you are wondering if you can use the touchpad as a secondary screen, and yes, you can. Let me show you real quick. I'm just gonna put my character panel down here. So as you can see, I'm loading up this screen down here with some glyphs and character panels so I can have quick access to those. So let's say I'm working in Photoshop and I want to be able to have my color swatches and I wanna be able to have maybe my character panel right here. So what I'm gonna do here is pull down my brush panel and I can easily go ahead and tap into different brushes. Um, but the only problem I see with that is this doesn't really work well because this is not a touch screen up here, right? So if you select your brush, but then you wanna go paint, you would actually have to go like this, and then you would start brushing, which kind of confuses things. But you go ahead and tap a new brush, but then it actually doesn't function correctly because it's confused on what's down there and what's not. So that's kind of a bit of a boo-boo in just the application or the software side of things. So say I go ahead to close that out, which it's actually a little finicky trying to close it out. Come on. There we go. Works better with your finger. Um, that is an area where I think, man, maybe the brushes would actually do better being up here. And you can just maybe rest your rest your finger on the on the trackpad. Go ahead and display down here. And then as you're working, 
you go ahead and just like tap a different brush and then paint. But then you got to scroll way back up, tap a different brush, paint. So I think there's a few little like nuanced ways that they could really improve this. Um, right now, obviously, it has a lot of newness to it in how to use it. So, uh, like, I'm really kind of working through this now as the review is happening. Like, ways that I thought it would be useful as I was thinking about the review, it kind of counteracts itself in a way. I really wish that this was a touch screen. I think that would make a huge difference because what I could be doing is I could be mirroring the screen. I could sketch and I could go, okay, I need that brush. Click and then just keep going and then click and then keep going. Because even, because when I'm down here, now the mouse is down here, right? So watch, I go to move up and the mouse moves from here. So look, I touch there, so the mouse is there. So I gotta come over and then click. And then I'm doing there and then I gotta come back over and then click. So it's really great. Like the functionality of it is fantastic but the, the, there's still a few practical nuances that make it kind of odd to work with. All right, so I hope that really gave you a nice sample of this touchpad. I tried to really spend some time on this since this is like the key feature of the laptop. I'm gonna show you a few benchmarks really quickly. Um, the first being battery life. Now, because this is a two screen laptop, battery life was not stellar on this laptop. The maximum battery life was found during streaming video playback and that was seven hours and 16 minutes at 20% screen brightness. Working in Photoshop, I got about three hours and 12 minutes of battery life. And then for video editing playback about an hour and 15 56 minutes. So not the best battery life laptop because of the dual screens. Definitely want to bring that charger along with you. However, I will say because the charger um, hooks USB type C, it's a nice small 100 watt charger block. So that is a big benefit that it's not a huge charger block, but you still have to bring it along. Now, as far as the Photoshop benchmark is concerned, this has all the power you need for Photoshop. And even right now, from like a fan noise perspective, I'm working in Photoshop. I have a slight bit of fan noise, maybe 25 decibels. I can barely hear it, especially when I'm talking. Um, let's see if you can hear it. It's very faint, very, very faint. So it does very good thermal management and still gets great performance. So an 889 inside of Photoshop, that's plenty at or above 700 is really where I look for to have a great Photoshop laptop. Now, in regards to video editing in Premiere Pro, this is what I was talking about. If you wanna export a nine minute 4K clip to 4K YouTube settings, it'll take you five minutes and six seconds. That's kind of on the upper end of the average export time for a laptop. And actually for 4K playback in the timeline, full quality actually dropped 11 frames. So with the absence of a dedicated GPU, this just isn't the best 4K video editing laptop. Now don't even think about 6K B-RAW without a dedicated GPU as it dropped 13,178 frames out of the 16,177 in the project. So you can get away with some 4K video editing, but I would not choose this laptop if that is your primary focus. And lastly, I'm gonna throw the Geekbench and Cinebench R23 scores up on the screen so you can take a look at those. Now, punch for punch, I love the functionality of this laptop. It's a great price point. It's a large screen, a lot of working room, and the touchpad is so practical. Why I love the touchpad is because, like I said earlier, normally you're pushing on your screen and your screen's falling down. With this, you can mirror your screen up top and immediately be working and have basically a Wacom tablet, an Intuos Wacom tablet, on your keyboard deck. I think that is fantastic. Are there some quirks? Yes. Are there some little nuances? that make it an odd workflow, yes, but you never have to bring a secondary device along with you. It's always right here and it's so practical. Being able to share your screen to show people what you just sketched up really quickly. Being able to pull secondary resources and pictures onto that. So as you're working on a design, you can have that as a reference. We're putting tools down there for maybe Premiere Pro if you do wanna do a little bit of video editing. It is so practical. It's color accurate, it's bright, it has a nice medium to large trackpad, and a great keyboard deck. One of the issues I have is it has slightly lower battery life, but that is to be expected with these two screens. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Likes of this video has brought you some value. And of course, 
subscribe so we can reach 100,000 subscribers so you don't miss out on the giveaway of Legion 5 Pros. I'll see you here in the next video.